Silver keeps hitting new highs relative to platinum, and yes, platinum is also at all-time lows relative to gold, so both gold and silver are at record highs. And so it looks like we have a little bit of a rally since around June 27th. I would be a little cautious of it, though we could get whipsawed here because it looks like open interest has gone too high, too fast in the gold market, which is reflected, of course, in the silver market. It doesn't necessarily mean that this rally won't be sustained, but it does mean to stay cautious here and not to buy fully emotionally into this rally since June 27th. We could see a few more drops from here in the short term, though compared to commodities in the silver and gold to commodities ratio, we look to be in a healthy bull market that continues with a decisive break of the 200-week moving average, and we should continue higher and higher into, eventually, the end game. Silver keeps hitting new highs relative to platinum, and yes, platinum is also at all-time lows relative to gold, so both gold and silver are at record highs in platinum terms, which means if you've always wanted some platinum and you've always wanted it as part of your stacks, now is a good time to get a little bit. Silver premiums have been dead on arrival for a while now. The markets, the physical markets have calmed and still, despite that, prices hover near all-time highs in gold and above 30 in silver. So imagine what happens to the price when physical demand comes back into the picture. We have word out from Bloomberg that Saudi Arabia threatened to sell a bunch of European bonds if Russian assets were confiscated, which has me thinking, what is going on behind closed doors between Japan and the US? Very easily, Japan could threaten to sell a whole bunch of treasuries if the US does not lower interest rates and erase the spread between the yen and the dollar, which is weakening the yen, which is now near 162 yen per dollar a 1986 low. There's a lot of threats going on behind closed doors. We just don't know what they are. World something, organization of whatever. What is it called? The New World Order? Who knows? And finally, as I wrote on the Endgame Investor on Substack, the unemployment numbers show that we should be in the next, and I believe, final recession any time now because it's been 14 months since the unemployment rate bottomed, and that's usually how long it takes between the unemployment rate bottoming and the next recession to become official. And this one is going to be a nasty one because we've got a lot of banks that are hundreds and billions of dollars underwater. Before we get to the slides, this week's Silver Report is brought to you by Fortuna Mining, symbol FSM. What's the S for? It's a legacy letter for Silver because we all know where they came from and we all know where they're going. The latest news from Fortuna Mining is good news. Symbol FSM, Vancouver, British Columbia, July 9th. Fortuna Mining reports production results for the second quarter, 2024, from its five operating mines in West Africa and Latin America. Gold equivalent production of 116,570 ounces, a 25% increase compared to quarter two of 2023, and a 4% increase, increase sequentially compared to last quarter, Q1 of 2024. Gold production was 92,716 ounces, a 44% increase over Q2 of 2023, and a 3% increase sequentially from last quarter. Silver production is down, but it is more than made up for by the increase in gold production. As we see, Fortuna is becoming more of a gold miner as we move into the months ahead. Well, yeah, of course it's going to be ahead. Can't move behind. And if you look at the five-year log chart, we can see here that we are at uh, one of the final resistance zones of the last five years that we touched in October 2021. If we can break through here and sustain it, we could be in a new trading range for Fortuna in the medium to long term, and we won't have to deal with the $3 to $5 zone anymore uh, as we head into an environment where precious metals become more and more recognized as money by the public. I did notice yesterday, meaning Wednesday of this week, that there was some pretty good signs of strength in the miners in general, and Fortuna being one of the stronger mining companies, I think this stock will continue to outperform. And as full disclosure, I do own FSM. And so with that, let's get to today's presentation. 
So anyway, we have this open interest chart. You can see here that open interest has really climbed since the June 27th bottom in gold. And of course, silver follows gold here. I'm using the gold chart as a proxy. So June 27th, we had a low of about $2,300. And now we're at uh, close to 2400 I think 2380 last time I looked or wherever it is now when you're watching this, I don't know. Uh, so we had a low here of about 440,000 contracts on that low in the in the gold market and now we're at 530,000 so that's 90,000 contracts not much of a price move but a big move in open interest that's making me a little bit nervous really nervous it's more that i'm just being cautious here i don't quite trust this rally uh in term in dollar terms at least i'll show you the or the rallying commodity terms which is much more promising um i still think there could be some whipsawing action in the days maybe a week or two ahead just stay cautious here and expect it and and play uh, play nice, basically. So um, that that doesn't mean that it's, this is a fake rally. It could be real, but because you look here uh, in March, and we did have a major rally in price here, and a huge rally in open interest. And uh, then the, what we really want to see is this, though, right? Uh, this is price moving up from about twenty one fifty. It looks like to a high of a twenty four fifty. So we had about three hundred dollar move here, and open interest didn't really do much at all. That keeps the bullish uh, uh, fuel alive, as long as you don't keep rising and rising in open interest. We saw, remember, when open interest hit a, an all-time record of uh, 850,000 contracts, that was in the eve of the March smash, which took a lot of people out of the game, unfortunately. So for that reason, just stay cautious here. If you're trading, especially if you're stacking, it doesn't really matter that much because premiums are very low right now. Um, and uh, you can still get a pretty good deal on physical. Call Miles Franklin. And mention Arcadia Economics, of course. I don't remember if I talked about this previously two weeks, two or three weeks ago, but silver has at an all-time high relative to platinum. This is actually the platinum to silver ratio, how many ounces of silver it takes to buy one ounce of platinum. Now, I don't recommend stacking platinum. I never did. But if you've always wanted some platinum just to diversify, just to have it because it is a really cool metal to own, um, now would be the time to exchange some silver if you have any extra or too much in your safe or it's too heavy or whatever you want to free up some room. Then you could take some of your silver and buy some platinum at a very good deal right now. It's about 32 ounces. You see here the ratio is 32.07. That's what it is today as well. Uh, so it takes 32 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of platinum, and we've only gone below that one time in history, and that was in 1980 uh, when we were about 18, close to 15 to 1. And there was that 15 to 1 ratio again in Endgame. I guess it also goes that way in platinum as well. But yeah, you're not going to get much better prices than this, I don't think, uh, in terms of platinum for silver if you want to do some trading. Or uh, maybe Miles Franklin will take your silver and give you some platinum. Could be. Ask Chris. Maybe he knows. He would know. It's his channel. Gold at all time high versus platinum. One more thing about platinum. You can see that if you want to trade some of your gold, I am not trading gold or platinum. Um, I don't have that much gold and I want to keep it. But if you have a little bit more than you want and you want some platinum instead, it's a good time to trade some gold for platinum if that's what you want. Silver premiums are dead on arrival. We're at 7.96% premium on junk silver relative to the spot price. Uh, this is uh, prior, almost prior to Silver Squeeze. Silver Squeeze is right here where I am circling in the beginning of 2021. There was this big jump on Silver Squeeze and then we moved up from there to about 50% uh, right before 2023, about uh, October, November 2022. And we've been going down ever since. Uh, demand is kind of soft right now and I see that on my channel as well. Uh, so this is going to wake up uh, pretty soon, I think, after the next banking crisis, it's going to wake up very powerfully, uh, and we'll see what happens then. But if you want to get a good deal on physical silver or physical gold right now, uh, now's the time to buy because premiums are very, very low. Silver versus commodities continuing a healthy bull market. Uh, so we talked about how I don't trust the dollar rally so much, or the current one since June 27th, very minor um, uh, short-term rally here. But what I am seeing on silver versus commodities is that we have broken decisively through the 200-week uh, moving average. We broke through it once here, and we settled back down to test again, and now we've broken through it again. So it looks like we're decisively above the 200-week moving average. This is a very rare signal as it goes uh, silver bull markets relative to other commodities. It means that the value of silver is rising relative to other commodities because its moneyness is starting to wake up again. Uh, and the logical way that works is that other commodities do not have monetary demand. Silver has monetary demand, and everyone needs money. Therefore, everyone needs silver. 
as the uh, moneyness of silver is recognized, so this bull market should continue higher and higher as the moneyness of silver becomes recognized as the dollar fails, because as the dollar fails, people with currency are going to realize that they have nothing and they're going to need a money and there is no spontaneous agreement on money. It has to go back to the past and the past is gold and silver and silver is the public and gold is the banks. That's how it is. That is monetary reality and there's no arguing it really. I mean, you could, it just doesn't make any sense.